Hello, Closet Reloader here again with another boring PowerPoint presentation on the effect of case volume on velocity. If you have ever heard a little information is a dangerous thing, this is a little information. Do not use this information to determine how much inert packing you can put in a cartridge. Changing the case volume seriously perturbs the power curve of the cartridge system. Use this video when you have trouble getting to sleep. This is for academic purposes only. Under no circumstances is this information to be used for determining loads. I am using an approximation which is not accurate enough for safe use of this information. This is for academic interest only. I am using data for IMR 4350 and a 30 caliber 150 grain bullet. This data is from Modern Reloading for a 308 300 H&H Magnum and as a data check 30 odd 6. Note that a 300 H&H Magnum takes a Magnum primer skewing the data. I have graphed the cartridges 308, 30 odd 6 and H&H Magnum. I have extended their trend lines for 308 and H&H Magnum to encompass the 30 odd 6 data which I will be using to demonstrate the accuracy of this method. We could use multivariable algebra to develop a comprehensive model. But for the purposes of this exercise, I am keeping it as straightforward and easy to understand as much as I can make algebra straightforward and easy to understand. If you want to know how I determined these equations, watch my other boring video on determining intermediate velocities. You take the equations and set them to your target velocity. In this case, I'm choosing 2750 feet per second as that is within the case capacity and safe loading range of the 30-06 cartridge. Please note that the data will be skewed since the H&H &H Magnum cartridge uses a Magnum primer and the 308 and 30-06 do not. Note, the data we are using for this analysis are outside the safe reloading parameters for this powder. I will now develop another equation describing case volume and powder loads for a 150 grain bullet traveling 2,750 feet per second. A line is described as y equals mx plus b where m is the slope of the line and b is the x-intercept. Uh, m equals 4.5832, b equals 36.551, which yields the equation grains equals 4.5832 times case volume plus 36.551. Plotting the equation, we get the following graph. This is for case volume versus grains of powder for a 150 grain bullet, 308 thousandths in diameter, accelerated to 2,750 feet per second. If you don't have a headache yet, here it comes. Let's cross check the information to the earlier calculated 30 odd 6 data. First, set the equation we just developed equal to the 30 odd 6 case capacity. This yields 56.625 grains. Next, use the earlier 30 odd 6 specific equation to calculate the grains necessary to achieve 2,750 feet per second, which is calculated at 54.297 grains. The difference is 2.328 grains, or 4.3%, but the assumptions made in the earlier equations used to calculate the later equations make the accuracy closer to 8%. And there is the added inaccuracy of the H&H &H Magnum using a Magnum primer, which skews the data even further. I do not advocate using this method to predict changes in cartridge performance or for load development. However, you should be aware that the increase in case capacity does adversely affect the powder's efficiency in accelerating a bullet to gain 300 feet per second is it worth an extra 15 grains of powder and the extra cost associated with the large brass. Basically, choose the cartridge that is just big enough to do what you want it to do, or don't. I'm guilty of overkill and cartridge selection just as much as the next shooter. Thanks for watching.